Hi, you're listening to the Build Your Digital Community Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Bartold, the co-founder and co-CEO of The Social Snippet, a social media agency focused on business owners growing their digital communities. On this podcast, we'll talk about all things digital community building so that you can grow your network and ultimately your business. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Build Your Digital Community. I'm your host, I'm Christina, and I'm thrilled again because this is the second of two episodes that I actually hope I air them in in this order, but um, that I got to spend with Allie Hicks Wright in Denver recording in person. Hi, Allie. Hello. I am so excited. We did our other episode. We just recorded about, you know, networking as an introvert and building your kind of community that way. And so that was fire. I'm so excited about that coming out. So I'll link that for you folks. Um, And we, you were one of my very first guests, like in the OG, like probably first five or six episodes. And we talked all about like branding and colors and all of that. Yeah. In my house, like you came, (laughs) you came to my house and we just sat in front of my computer. Oh my gosh. I can't even believe that was over a year ago. Was it? Yeah. It was like August of 2022. Yeah, it was. Plus foundations. That's awesome. It's so amazing. Like, uh, how, I, like, I was thinking about this on the way here today because when I was going through customs, like Canada and States, they ask you all these questions. And um, I'm always, like, so stressed every time because you don't want to actually tell them that you're doing business. But I'm always honest about it because I just, like, don't want to get into any trouble ever. <laughs> and um, so I was telling them about having business friends. And they were like, how do you meet business people in Denver? And I had to be like, I was blood part of a mastermind. But I realized you go, I go to all these amazing cities and I have... <laughs> so this is your customs conversation. Oh, yeah. They asked me so many questions. One time, I will tell you. Oh, my gosh. If this episode pivots, I'll die. But one time, Maria and I went through and the guy was like, so what do you do? And I was like, oh, I run a, uh, an agency, like a social media agency. He's like, oh, like influencers? And I was like, no. And he's like, ads? I'm like, no, like done for you, custom social. He goes, oh, how do you grow a following? I died. I died. I had to answer. And I was like, well, I guess like the best way I, I think you would grow a following is this and this and this and this. And, and he was like, yeah, yeah, great. Because I've been trying to do this on TikTok. And I was like, yeah, TikTok's a hard game. And like I was I was taken for a ride. I felt a little taken advantage of by this customs <laughs> officer. But um, what I found funny about it is that I, I had to tell him about how I knew all these amazing people like you um, through masterminds and stuff like that. But it's great to see you in person and do this in person. I'm so glad that you're here and we get to spend the weekend together. I know. Because we're in occasions event i know oh i'm so excited yeah we also met through best foundations yeah 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 oh my gosh it's so funny this world's so small it is you realize how it's just like a web of interconnectedness yeah i'm here for it though i'm here for like all the good relationships and stuff and like every good person i meet they bring like five new good people well the every like you bring me five good people weekly. (laughs) stop you bring me good people too well, yeah, but like you're the you're the center of the, the you're the epicenter <laughs> of the web. That's sweet. Well, I feel like I I have gone all in on networking to grow our business. That's been really what we talked about a little bit in the other episode. But like that has been kind of how I've grown or how we've grown our business has been me investing and in being in rooms um, because that's kind of I think my superpower is connecting with people and all of that. But um, it's am- the people you meet are just freaking the coolest. It's like so cool to meet all these amazing people and and even people who were on my like vision board list of people who I wanted to connect with are people now who I am like peers with or you know get to have dinner with and stuff. Like it's it's amazing. It's so cool. Yeah, and I, I it's been so long. cool for because when we first met, you were what maybe six months into your business. Yeah. And so to see how your networking has just skyrocketed your business is so, so cool. Because I've had mine for seven years, and I would say mine's been, like, this very consistent, mm-hmm. gradual growth over the past seven years. Whereas for you, you you got started in, like, just you hit the ground running so mm-hmm. hard, especially with networking, that you just, like, shot up. And so it's so cool to see how that's impacted your team as well as your clients and just like the the lifestyle that you and Maria have created. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you know what I think is interesting, and, and I'm I'm not nervous this whole pivot at the conversation because if this is where this goes, this is great. But you know what I find really interesting about you generally is that other than you being I'm a, scared, no, <laughs> other than you being an introvert, you're obsessed with the mountains and like going outside and stuff, which is not um, anything I'm obsessed with. Um, is your scaling dreams are very different than I would say a traditional agencies. Yeah, maybe so. I just I like very sustainable, gradual growth. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just is. I I don't know. Because we've talked about this a bit. Because when we sat together, 
at FFM. And I hope you don't mind me sharing this. No. I don't think that this is, uh, if you're like, this is private, we'll cut this out. But when we sat together at, at FFM, we were kind of like, we were definitely behind you kind of in business for sure. And one of the things we talked about was, I was like, oh, like, do you have team members? You're telling me how, about how amazing Rachel is. Rachel is um, kind of like the copywriter on mm-hmm. your team. She's kind of like your other half. She's incredible. And so Rachel, and I was like, oh, are you going to hire more people? You're like, I don't know. And I was like, oh, like, do you want more projects? And you're like, I'm like happy with the load we've got. Mm-hmm. And I've never been happy with the load we've got. <laughs> like, I've always been like, oh, we have 30 clients, we need 40. I can't wait to be at 60. Like, I can't, now that we're at 60, I'm like, can't wait to be at 75. Like, that's been so much of, like, my experience of growing a business with no end goal. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm not like, I need to be eight figure or anything like that. It's just, that's the way we've built. But you are so freaking talented. You do such amazing work. Like, I think everybody needs your services. Like, I'm always, like, singing your praises everywhere I go. But you have... Like, you don't have the same scaling dreams. Not really. I really like running a very simple business. And so I, like, we have low overhead, high profit margins, and it just feels easier to me. Like, it, it's more simple for our clients. It's more simple for me. Because for me, like, I, I could manage a team. Yeah. And I think I would do well at that. But that's not where I'm best suited to be. And it's not my what I'm passionate about. I could also hire someone to manage a team. But that, like, the more people, like, if you, like, have you ever seen those graphs where it's like, okay, you have the, like, three people and there's three lines connecting, right? Mm. But then as soon as you have six people, then all those lines are, like, crisscrossing and everything that there's so many more, like, lines of connection to make sure that everything's running smoothly. And so for me, it just, like, I got so lucky that I started my business, ran it myself for two years, and then... Uh, my best friend was just in a place where she was getting out of a bad job situation. She had the exact skills that our clients needed that we were like, okay, let's give this a shot. And I brought on my best friend as my one and only employee. Mm. And it's been that way now for the last five years. And so I get to work with my best friend. Like we've been best friends for over a decade. We're college roommate. We 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 are. We were. <laughs> we're not still in college. <laughs> That's why you don't want to scale this. Yeah. You're doing yeah, it from your dorm. <laughs> yeah. We're still just working out of the dorms. We go to the cafeteria. <laughs> what is it called? The food hall? What what do you call it in college? So we would call it a cafeteria, but okay. we also like, we never the use, dining hall. We don't That's use the word dorms. It. Oh, okay. Like we you guys love the word hall. dorms, and Canadians find it offensive. Oh, Isn't that interesting. I didn't know that. Anyway. Well, we're so off track. Yeah, here. sorry. <laughs> um, but anyways, I just really like the simplicity, and like we were talking about in our last episode, I like to have a business that's just really well suited for my life. That I don't feel like I have to like manage this whole team if I want to step away like it just like we get to work one-on-one with our clients every single project like I'm in it with the client I really get to know the client and so it's this it's this quality over quantity I guess yeah mentality with it that I still want to grow the business and like revenue wise I'm always you know wanting to scale up but in some ways like I don't think this is quite the proper way to say it but a lot of times the way that I look at it is more people, more problems. Yeah. That, like, the more people on your team, the more problems that are going to arise. The more people on your team, the more clients you need to have. So then the more projects you're managing. Mm-hmm. And for me, we've been able to create a really profitable business by having, like, a small team and low overhead but still be super impactful and create a lot of value for our clients. And so I just want to, like, double down on that. Oh, I love that. Okay, because one of the things I'm thinking about is kind of that idea of, like, new levels, new devils kind of thing, mm-hmm. where it's, like, yeah. the more you scale, like, the bigger it feels like your problems are. Because, like, we've scaled and, and you know, I, I'm not trying to say this. Like, we're definitely multi-six figure and, and hoping to be seven figure in 2024. But it's, like, that also comes with, like, an almost seven figure tax bill. It comes with all these things, like hiring, firing, like, doing all these things that are hard Mm -hmm. that I didn't feel the same way when we were making eight grand a month Mm -hmm. you know but I also feel like I have so much more opportunity where like an amazing opportunity comes up and I'm like it's 10 grand but it's 10 grand Mm -hmm. like it's a totally different feeling that I have and so it's just really interesting because I think as we grow our businesses like something I really respect about you in, in this idea of scaling is like I think people when they think about business actually our mutual friend of ours Laura Sinclair we were talking we went to the spa one time and we were talking and she's like what's your end goal and I was like, oh, I don't know. And she was like, how much money do you want to make in your business? 
And I was like, more than I've previously made. That's kind mm-hmm. of just always my mentality. Same. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we as entrepreneurs, we like to just continue leveling up on this, like, infinite ladder of growth. Yeah, infinite. Like, and I, and we've already surpassed where we were last year. So I'm like, you know, like, anything more that we make this year is already up, right? And she was like, yeah, well, like, why, like, why do you want to make this kind of money? Like, what? And I was like, oh, because I just want, like, you know, a lifestyle that... I want to be generous. Like, I want to, like, you know, go out and do whatever I want. Like, you know, and, like, I had all these reasons. And she's like, but what number do you need for that? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the number is. But it it was this thing of, like, I was like, oh, do I actually need this many clients? Like, do I actually need to be scaling this hard? Like, you know, do I actually need to be hustling to get more work? Like, no. And not that I really hustle that hard. But, like, you know, like, I don't need to be doing these things. And what I love about you is that, like, while your business is growing, while your business is scaling – it's very sustainable for you. And you're building it, again, I talked about this in the other one, but like building it in a way that you want to build your business and build your life because you're like, I don't want to manage a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I always say that we're small and nimble. Like we can, and we have really niched down and I think this is something that's taken time, but like we offer that we are experts in branding. We do Mm -hmm. brand design, brand messaging and websites and that's it. Like we don't, if social media, like, that's a referral for Christina. Yeah. Um, and it's, like, we've had this kind of, in some ways, a rite of passage of this time to really hone in on what we do best and just go all in on that for ourselves and for our clients because it's what we enjoy the most and what is most beneficial for our clients. And so I think one thing that, I mean, just isn't, and our friend Stacy could talk about this for days, but yeah. that just isn't talked about enough in – the entrepreneurial world is profit. There's a lot of revenue talk and there's not a lot of profit yeah. talk. And so I think a lot of times people are like, oh, well, I got to this this number and then I got to that number and I want to get to this number. And it's like, okay, great, but what at the end of the day are you taking home and how is that impacting your lifestyle? Because you could have these you know, dreams of scaling to seven, eight figures, whatever it may be, but then a lot of times like, you know, the more – The more team members you have, the more clients you have, like the more expenses come with that. So as long as that's impacting your business in a positive way and not also on the flip side burning you out, then great, keep growing. But if it's something where, you know, you can just really, you know, kind of fine tune your margins and keep things small and simple, if that's the way that you operate, then that's great too. And I Mm -hmm. think this also kind of ties into the conversation that we were just having in our last episode where I'm an introvert and you're like really, I I think on the the introvert extrovert scale we could not be more yeah. polar opposite. And for me like having a set like right now we have I think yeah we have eight active clients and we have five upcoming clients. Mm. And so I know those people. If it's more than that like if we're getting into like 20, 30, 40 clients for me as an introvert to really feel like I'm connected to mm. each of those people, I, I it would exhaust me or I would then start to feel disconnected from the work. Right. And so I would rather have this set of people that I know that we can help them so imp- like so impactfully in their business and then send them on their way once they're ready than try to like, I don't know, drown it out with tons and tons of clients. It's mm-hmm. just the way that I've... I've approached it and what works for me personally. Yeah. Oh, I love that because I do think it's like when we're growing our businesses, it's like we have to do it in ways that work for us. Mm -hmm. And I think there's this, there's this like method behind, I don't know. And and maybe you could challenge me on this a bit too, but it's like, I feel like in the circles you and I roll in, which because I think we've got a lot of mutual friends is there's this like Mm multimillionaire vibe. You know, where it's like a lot of us are scaling towards some figures or trying to and and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, I don't, I agree with you. Like, I think if there's no profit there, Mm -hmm. like, like I know somebody who would used to break all the time about a seven figure business and recently found out that it was a seven figure business that was spending eight figures Mm -hmm. to run, you know, and that probably like, you know, probably shouldn't have been as bragged about, you know, Mm -hmm. where it's like as like, it's expensive. And so I think for me, like, I'm thinking a lot about how, like, when we're building our businesses, I think taking away some of that shame of saying, like, I'm okay with a $200,000 business. Mm -hmm. And I feel great about a $100,000 business because I bring home, like, I don't, this is not our numbers, but I bring home 100K and I spend 50K and I pay someone else 50K and I feel great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and if it's, 
like for our clients, because we do get to see a lot of that when we're working so closely with our clients of what the numbers of the business are. And we do see it a lot more than I'd like, like, then I don't know, I'd like to admit that people are spending way more within their businesses than they're making. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you're depending on what type of it's so different too. I think that that's what's missed in a lot of business conversations, because if you own a product based business where you have to have like a brick and mortar location, which is, you know, you're buying, you're holding on to inventory or you're creating products that is so different than a service-based business they can operate from like the spare bedroom of your house mm-hmm. and so um you know i think like those those two different like numbers conversations have to happen in different areas like they're they just aren't apples to apples mm-hmm. and so i think it just gets kind of lost in the noise of a social media especially i think um there's just a lot of people getting on social media saying like i made this much yeah. but not really talking about how that then trickles down to like what they're actually taking home Mm -hmm. and it's put and some of those people are making that and that's great for them um but it's not I don't know I think it's kind of putting bad taste in people's mouths Mm -hmm. or setting false expectations uh yeah I totally agree on the false expectations thing too because I've seen people who claim to make a ton of money and then you know later in the woodwork you find out they don't make as much money as they do but you know they're balling out Mm mm-hmm and it's like, so you have this thing where you're like, oh, you're rolling out. Like, this is, like, awesome. This must be, like, great. And this is why I've really struggled, too. Like, when I got my car, I, like, didn't post it. Mm-hmm. And I was really struggling with it. And I saw my friend, like, I got my car about a year ago. And I saw my friend, and she was like, you have a Tesla? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, why didn't you say anything or, like, post about it? And I was like, oh, because I know a lot of people who are really hit by, like, you know, the impact of our economy right now. And are struggling to make sales. Mm-hmm. And that isn't my situation um, because I'm, I'm very blessed that people need social. Um, but I felt a lot of guilt around that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to make it seem like we were making more money than we were. You know, and I'm always like, it's a Model 3. Like, it's mm-hmm. really the basic. Like, I got it in white. I didn't have to pay for the paint. Um, but it's just like, I think it's okay to be excited about things. And, and like, I really actually like encourage people to share wins and when you do fun stuff. And like, but at the same time, it's also recognizing too, like, like take things with a grain of salt when you see them online Mm -hmm. it's like and it's easy like you know that might not be your season yet but it could come but it's like also yeah like I think it's just thinking about 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 things a bit differently yeah yeah exactly and I think you know because it's just so different for everyone's scenario because it you know you might be a single person just supporting yourself or you might be supporting a family of six and so the way that that you know impacts your goals and your dreams can can make a big difference and so I I like what you said about like kind of I don't know saying that it's okay like I want a hundred thousand dollar business or two hundred thousand whatever that number may be for you because for me like when I started my business seven years ago my goal was to match my salary and like I I quit my job I transitioned my boss to my first client and my revenue goal for that year was just to hit my salary and, like, I didn't take into the account at the time that, like, taxes were very different, business yeah. <laughs> expenses were very different. But then from there, I've just scaled it up and up and up and up and been able to, you know, grow a small team and um, just really keep, like I said, like, low overhead, high profit margins because that just is what feels most simple to mm-hmm. me um, and honestly most sustainable that then I'm, like, with those high profit margins, I'm able to then reinvest that money back into my business and, more importantly, back into my life. Mm-hmm. Do you ever get tempted, Allie, like, when you, like, go to masterminds? Because, you know, something Allie does a lot and and I do as well, obviously, is, like, we both really, like, invest in our businesses and we build our network and all of that. But do you ever get tempted when you're at something and people are giving you scaling advice, like, to think about your business in a different way and be like, oh, like, maybe I I should get more employees and maybe I should do this? Like, do you ever – are you ever swayed? Yeah, I I definitely question it of, like, oh, maybe I should build, you know, a bigger agency and have this team and – and, and maybe that will come with time if I'm mm-hmm. wanting to step away from the business more. Um, but I've, I've kind of gone down that route in terms of hiring, and it just has never felt right that I trust that, like, instinctual feeling of, like, nope, this is where we're meant to be right now. And I'm not – like, we, we have a team of three right now, and so I'm not opposed to that growing. But I for me, the long-term vision is, like, a team of five to seven, like, very close-knit people. It's not – have it like to me the thought of like managing 
a contractor here and a contractor there and you know someone coming in part-time here is just overwhelming to me like I like Mm -hmm. the simplicity that exists within my business and it I think is really easy for my clients to understand as well that like oh you're coming in to work with Amari Creative great you get to work with Allie and Rachel Mm -hmm. not like oh okay we'll match you with you know so and so and um, that I'll be a mystery from there and that's just what again has like there's if you're doing it you know the full-blown agency model that is great too like I don't have any qualms either way it's just this is what's worked for us mm-hmm. love it yeah. love it Allie if you had any advice for somebody who might be like in the early stage of biz and they're like oh like I don't actually want to scale a biz but like I'm getting all this like feedback and like it's coming up because that's what everybody talks about all the time what would you tell people to do Hmm. I just do whatever feels most aligned to you and like take because with social media, I think the the tricky thing for kind of like all areas of life is it's hard to distinguish what ideas are our own and what are other people's ideas or other people's like Im- like our impressions of other people that we're then like taking as a reflection of ourselves or our own lives. And so just kind of like getting quiet for a moment and like turning off the noise like get the do the research get the information that you need from the people that have walked that path or that have not walked that path but then from there just like eliminate the noise and figure out like what you truly want because if you want to scale a business and bring on a team of 30 people then that's great like then figure out the right mentors to then like the people who have done that to then help you make that dream a reality if you're like, whoa, that sounds really complicated, that sounds like too much, mm. then maybe just, first of all, check yourself, like figure out why that feels like too much. Um, is it a limiting belief? Is it fear-based that you're like, oh, I don't deserve that or I don't, I'm not capable of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, then maybe address that. But if it's truly like, no, I just want this to be simple or I want it to fit my lifestyle in this way or that, then double down on that and create the business that you want. So mm-hmm. just really listen to what it is that is driving you and then also find the mentors that have done it the way that you want um, so that you can really just learn from them. Yeah, and I think that's a big point. We probably could have spent the whole time talking about this point, but the mentorship piece. It's Mm -hmm. like finding mentors that are aligned for you. And I was talking about this with, um, I had dinner with somebody yesterday. We were having this conversation and we were talking about uh, somebody we both mutually know. And I was like, I bought mentorship from them knowing I didn't need to learn from them. And that they weren't my style and that they weren't who I wanted to learn from. And um, they're great and they serve so many people and they're so good at what they do and people love them. And I actually like them too. But it was just like not aligned. Mm -hmm. And I got into the like the haze of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think when we're choosing mentors, like people doing doing business the way you want business to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, like if people are out there and they're like, hustling for clients and they're doing ads and, and, you know, sending cold emails and that's not the way you want to run your business. And it's probably not who you should be learning from. Mm -hmm. But if there's someone out there who does business the way that you do it and you want to learn from them, I think that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, I guess the, what I've learned out of my business is like, wherever you want it to be, you can create it that way. Mm. Like, like we were talking about earlier, like I only take meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays because I want to have like admin day on Mondays I want to have creative flow day on Wednesdays and Fridays or I want to be able to take Fridays off to travel and so just taking like kind of the the foundations of your business and the way that it runs and questioning like how do I want this to run because we kind of forget that regardless of how big our team is that we get the control over how it operates and so just really setting the foundation for that and living into it yourself so that you're an example of it for your team I think is so important and then yeah when it comes to mentorship one thing I was going to say is um the way that I look at it I I like to have two different forms of like networking the first is community based and then the second is like true mentorship like coaching based so the first one being you know this is a place where you can like walk into a room of other people and you know, meet other business owners who have different different types of businesses from you, different team sizes, and really get a bunch of different perspectives. And also just network and whether it's getting more clients or customers, like just really build a community. And then the other piece of 
networking that I like to have is more coaching based, like learning from one person who's going to hold you accountable, help you like really get clear on what the goals are and then go after those goals and, um, you know, teach you and like show you the way I think is, is so important. So have kind of like, I like to kind of like flip flop back and forth between those two different types of investments, honestly, within the business, two different like networking styles. Mm. Ali, thank you so much for this. You really poured in. And this was not what we were going to talk about. Not at all. <laughs> we were like, we were jamming out. We were like, do we talk about like branding and your first few years of business? Like, so maybe we'll have time in the next few days, perhaps maybe before our Ritz Carlton massage date um, <laughs> to um, put our little mics on. Three. I mean, it won't be as fancy as this amazing <laughs> studio, but um, which we'll link in the, in the show notes as well for you to book if you're ever in Denver, because it is great. And the people who, who run it over here are awesome. They're probably listening to this. Um, but yeah, Ali, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for listening to the build your digital community podcast. If you love the episode, please don't forget to rate us and leave us a review. Now we'd love for you to be a part of our digital community. Text join to 855-908-4688 to join our text list for exclusive social media tips, or DM us on Instagram at the social snippet, letting us know what you loved about the episode. Keep on building community and to this and so, so much more.